But got something a little bit different here planned on the channel. Instead of making some goofy videos about blowing up my car or anything else I could possibly do with the Mustang, I decided that I'm gonna do a video about some uh, arts and crafts projects for us car guys. So that's what we're gonna be doing today, but what exactly are we gonna be doing? Ah, that's a great question. Metal, it's pretty cool stuff. Makes a lot of things we love, but sometimes metal just lacks any type of character or look and it's just bare form. That's why we like painting our cars because the bare metal sometimes just doesn't do it unless it's an old DeLorean, then it works. Most time we like color on our metal and when it comes down to small little bits and pieces and parts on our cars, sometimes they do not have color and sometimes you can't just paint them. So then what are you left to do? Anodize those parts or buy them anodized, which is usually pretty expensive on top of whatever you get, but you can anodize your parts at home. Did you know that? I know, right? And there's a couple different ways you can do it. If you have titanium, super easy. As long as you have some baking soda, some water, and a way to apply voltage to your part, man, you could get a rainbow of colors on titanium. But let's say you're using uh, aluminum. Well, the process is a little bit more tricky and uh, it can be kind of dangerous. So I thought, well, how can we make the process a little bit easier, less dangerous, achieve a nice result, and uh, anodize our own aluminum at home? So that's what we're gonna do in today's video. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can anodize this piece of aluminum using household materials, cheap, safe, and get an awesome color on this that will look really cool if this was actually a piece I would be putting on my car. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's have some fun on Cars Create! Okay, so what do we need to anodize our piece of metal? Well, right here, this is all you need. Now, unfortunately, the process for anodizing aluminum is a lot more tricky than anodizing titanium. Titanium is really easy. It will change color with electrolysis. Aluminum will not change color with electrolysis. However, we still need to use electrolysis because that is an important part in how we change the color of aluminum. So from what I understand is you have to put your metal in something acidic, generally sulfuric acid, battery acid, something highly, highly acidic, highly, highly dangerous, highly, highly expensive to achieve the results that you normally would expect from a uh, industrial or mass produced professional piece. Well, most people are A, not gonna have access to sulfuric acid, or not gonna wanna play with sulfuric acid or battery acid if they wanna pour it out of a battery. If those safety reasons aren't good enough and the cost isn't good enough, then I don't know what is. So I thought, well, what could I use to substitute battery acid that you can get anywhere and it's still highly acidic? That's where vinegar comes into play. Now vinegar, white distilled vinegar is highly acidic. It is two on the pH scale. Now while it's not as acidic as let's say sulfuric acid, which is a 0.5, it is still highly acidic, which is why a lot of people use vinegar such as this for cleaning, which is pretty much why I have this. I use it for cleaning. But this should be acidic enough to achieve the results we want. So of course this is our acidic part, but then we need our voltage. There are some gizmos and gadgets that you can use to adjust and dial in voltage, usually for like testing electronics and stuff. If you have something like that, great. If you don't, I don't recommend sticking an extension cord in a bucket of water. Probably not a great idea. So for the electricity part of this, a much safer and cheaper alternative is just using batteries. These are nine volt batteries I got from Harbor Freight, four pack for like three bucks. So you can get a ton of these and I have them stacked together. So right now they are actually around 40 volts. I know what you're saying, how are you gonna get 40 volts from four nine volt batteries? Well, for some reason, each one of these batteries is testing at 10 volts. Hey, not bad for Harbor Freight, right? So 40 volts of power right here is gonna be applied to our little piece of metal. Now here's the thing, when you have the voltage applied to the metal, 
inside a acidic solution, what happens is there's these little channels that get formed in the metal or on the metal rather. And that is crucial because then what you do is you boil it in an anodizing dye. Now here comes the next question. Well, where do you get anodizing dye? Don't really know. I'm sure you can find it somewhere. Online, you can find everything. So poking around, I've learned that using fabric dye is a good way to get color on your metal. This supposedly works just as good as most anodizing dyes and it's a lot cheaper. This was $4 at Walmart and you can get it at most craft stores and probably a larger variety of colors, but I like purple, so that's why I chose purple. So now that you get the gist of everything, there's still one more part of all of this that you kind of have to keep in mind. Like most times when you apply color to metal, prepping is crucial and prepping your piece or part for anodizing is crucial. So we're gonna be using brick parts cleaner to clean up our metal. And that way it's a much, much safer alternative than using lye. Probably, maybe, it depends how much you breathe in. All right, enough of me jibber jabbering. Let's go ahead and get started with the process. All right, so first things first, we wanna go ahead and put some gloves on because while we're not dealing with super serious chemicals, we are dealing with things that are considered uh, carcinogens. So, you know, you, you may, you may want to put some type of protection on, you know what I'm, I'm saying? Not to mention, you don't want to get your hands all dyed up and nasty. I wouldn't want to get this stuff on me anyway. You walk around looking like damn grimace. So I've already cleaned a lot of the surface with a wire brush and uh, just grinding the metal down nice, get all the junk off. But we want to make sure it's super, super clean. So I'm going to go ahead and shake this up real nice. I'm just going to go ahead and Get that on there. This will help clean out all the pores of the metal. Okay, now we want to do a final rinse. Rinse off any brake cleaner, more distilled water. You don't really have to make sure it's dry so much because uh, that's about to change. So right here, I have a bucket. And it's in this bucket is where I'm gonna pour my vinegar. And it don't have to be a lot, it just has to be enough to cover the piece of metal, which, that should do. So here I have some cables that I've made that are just regular wire. I have a gator clip on one end and just, you know, a very long stripped piece on the other end, which I'm going to use. Go through one of these holes here in this piece. And I mean, whatever, whatever it is you're anodizing, you can wrap it around it or whatever. But as long as the metal's making good contact with your piece, that's the important part. So now I can go ahead and just lower that down in the bucket there. Make sure it's fully submerged, then it is. You have to use two pieces of metal for this process to get the electrolysis to work correctly. And basically you're using another piece of metal to ground out the current back into the vinegar. Stick that down in there. So now at this point, we have our little nine volt battery pack thing going on here. So we wanna go ahead and make sure that we have the negative going to the ground piece and the positive going to the piece we want to anodize. And go ahead and check our voltage going from our wires here. It went down to 35, because now there's a current running through the batteries. And you can see it's dropping pretty quick, 35, 34, nine, and you see it's gonna to continue to drop. But right now we have current running through this liquid. I wouldn't want to touch it because it would probably hurt. It may be hard to tell, but if you look down inside there, you can see some bubbling. You see the bubbling happening? Well, that's the electrolysis. And that's what's gonna go ahead and put all those grooves in the metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna let these batteries sit and just deplete themselves in the solution here. I'm not sure how long it's gonna take, probably an hour or so. If everything is good, we'll take it to the next step. Many hours later. Well, it's been about an hour, two hours. <laughs> two hours. And uh, take a peek. As you can see, the electrolysis is doing its thing. Lots of bubbles on and around the metal piece there. So hopefully that uh, what's supposed to be happening is happening. And there's a bunch of those little crevices being built up all around that piece. I'm gonna go ahead and check our voltage here. Remember we started at like 38 and now we're down to 23. Battery's a little warm. I think this should have been a long enough. Looks like there's plenty of things going on down in there. I think this was long enough 
to do what we need to do. Keywords, I think. Full disclosure, I have no clue if this is actually going to work. This is just taking some information from a few different sources, putting it all together, and hopefully it is a right cocktail of what I'm trying to do. So I have no clue if this is actually gonna work, but that's the fun part about the videos is you never know if I'm gonna succeed or fail. All right, I just disconnected our battery. I'm gonna go ahead and pull our piece out now. The whole garage freaking smells like vinegar. Go ahead and pull this out, move the bucket out of the way. Go ahead and lay this down on a clean paper towel. Now, once again, I wanna rinse this off with some distilled water. Rinse off any of the uh, vinegar. So now the next step is to go ahead and get a couple pots of distilled water boiling, and then we'll go ahead and throw our dye in one of those pots. So I have two pots here filled with distilled water. This is the pot that I'm going to be using for the dye. I have not a clue how much dye to use. I'm going to assume it, I'm gonna use as much as I want the color to be. So go ahead and put a little bit, wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Doesn't take much dye to make a lot of color. I guess we should uh, get this boiling and that should help mix the dye up. Perhaps I should have put the dye in after it was boiling. So my dye pot is just about to start boiling and I think I like the color of uh, purple going on in there. So I'm not gonna add any more. That's all I'm gonna use. And then once this gets up to a full boil, I'm gonna go ahead and put in my aluminum piece. All right, we got a full boil now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna just dump this in here and see if it starts taking on any dye. And not so much. Doesn't look like it's actually taking any of the dye at all. So we're just gonna go ahead and just let it sit in there and see what happens. So we got our second pot of water going here. We're gonna go ahead, just let our part just kind of relax in there a minute. So the moment of truth, this has been chilling in the fresh water for, uh, I don't know, five minutes or so. And uh, this is just to help kind of harden everything together, or seal it all together. There's a definitely a more scientific uh, explanation of that, but uh, the easy way of understanding it is uh, it just seals it all together. So let's go ahead and pull our little piece of lumen out and see if we have a purple piece of aluminum. Oh. Oh, that's disappointing. That don't look purple to me. <laughs> okay, where did we go wrong? Let's take a look here, a close look, and let's see if we can see what happened. I mean, we can obviously see what didn't happen is uh, we did not anodize our piece of aluminum. If you look really closely, it looks like there was some of the dye starting to take in. There's some pores here. Really on the side here, you can see where I started taking it in. That's in there. That's not coming out while I'm just wiping it off. That's in the metal. <laughs> Not the results I was uh, was I was expecting. So, well, it kind of worked. I kind of anodized the piece of aluminum. Obviously, I screwed up somewhere along the way. I don't know if I screwed up with using batteries to try to anodize aluminum. Like I said, titanium. This would have been cake. I don't have any titanium bits around to do that with. Otherwise, I would have. I don't know if not cleaning it with something more than brake parts cleaner was a bad idea. Maybe just this type of metal, maybe it should have been less porous. Like this was a very porous piece of aluminum. Maybe it should have been sanded down more smooth. I don't know. Or maybe it was the vinegar. Maybe there's more of a reason why you need to use uh, sulfuric acid over just something acidic. Maybe there's something else in the acid that helps do what it needs to do. I don't know. I'm not a chemist. I'm just a moron who makes YouTube videos. So you see how that goes. It started to do it. So I don't know if the vinegar was the problem per se. I think maybe you just need more electricity. While we had a lot of voltage, we didn't have a lot of amperage. And just like most of this, there's a lot more to it than just putting some metal in a bucket with voltage and getting something cool. Like depending on the size of the part determines how much amperage you use, how much voltage you use. And I kind of just winging it to make a video. And well, I guess those things And well, I guess those things really are important. But like I said, I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not. And no, it, it didn't. 
kind of. But even though it didn't work and I didn't get my anodized aluminum, hopefully it was still an entertaining video and uh, you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please go ahead, give this video a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know. If you want to see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next Cars Created video.